Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Silent Hill podcast. Well, I've finally done it. I've gone ahead and I've finished viewing all of the walkthrough for Silent Hill 2. So be on the lookout for some of the final episodes of those probably coming on later on this week. And I'm going to wrap it up with my final thoughts on Silent Hill 2 and then move on to a new walkthrough, in this case Silent Hill 3, which I'm really excited about because Silent Hill 3 I keep hearing it is the best one of the entire series and so it's going to be great to see what everyone is talking about so be on the lookout for that too sometime in the near future now this next encountered monster is easily easily the most briefest encounter yet within Silent Hill 2 I mean the walkthrough that I saw this guy that was playing whenever the creatures were encountered in this level he basically just ran the entire way he never even encountered them uh, they were just they are just hanging within that level itself but he but they never essentially attacked him and they are so easily avoidable it's almost like a blink and miss moment so I don't know how much information can be covered on these creatures but they're known as the Mandarin which you're looking at a picture of here now when I first saw these within the game I almost had to do a double take because I thought to myself golly they sure do look uh, very very familiar because I've seen pictures of one of the monsters within Silent Hill 3 called the closer and they are both very very reminiscent of one another so this Mandarin could be seen as a precursor to the closer within Silent Hill 3 but otherwise the Mandarin very brief monster you can totally avoid it like the player did within the YouTube channel I don't even know why he was even even placed in the game considering the circumstances surrounding it being very brief but otherwise I'll try to cover as much information that I can here now the viewer the guy was playing uh, that, that was playing as a viewer like that I saw him do the walkthrough. Uh, he's his character, James Sunderland, found these creatures there in the other world, but particularly behind or below some of these mesh, I guess, like chain link floors of some sort. Like it's the floor itself, but it's made completely out of like a chain link fence. And the Mandarin is there just hanging, almost like a monkey, just hanging on the actual grating or the actual steel portion of those doors. And all it does is just hang there and wait for in this case a player to come about I guess the whole purpose of the Mandarin is to force someone to continue going through the level to continue moving forward because apparently if you stop then that's when these Mandarins are given a chance to attack they will follow the player and they'll try to corner the player but they are so easily avoidable again that there's not much success as far as how these Mandarins look like um, they seem to be almost like nurses of some sort but they have of course those gigantic arms that's the most I guess straight clear distinct feature of these things and it looks like at least to me like they have a nurse's outfit of some sort but according to the wikia page it says that it's more like a straight jacket I don't know that's more up to debate for someone else to decide but I thought it had a clear feminine figure and then the way that the that the skirt looked like it's more like a traditional nurse skirt so I thought that that's more along the lines of what that is and again considering the theme involving Silent Hill 2 and James's wife essentially spending the last days of her life there being cared for by so many nurses that's why I thought it was more along that lines almost like an homage or a representation of what she was seeing during the final days of her life but otherwise they have those gigantic arms that they use to dangle from those steel grates those arms have what look to be like these flesh lips of some sort that have its attack which is some kind of I don't know if it's like a tentacle or some other kind of appendage but they sprout out from the actual lips and they try to grab James um, as he's trying to pass them by but again so easily avoidable the guy that I was watching just zigzag left and right and then that was it by the time um, I even realized that this was a whole new monster this guy was already 
within another portion of the other world and he was um already like uh, past them they were never encountered ever again uh, somewhere else um as far as any other characteristics they have again like a nurse like um, an obscure face of some sort um the face itself you have to really zoom in i guess you would have to pause and make sure that you're standing still in order to see it it has like a gigantic set of flesh lips and then that's it like it seems to have an elongated face but it's only consisting of the lips themselves very reminiscent of the flesh lift that I covered um, in one of my earlier videos, again following along that theme too. Um, as far as who they were supposed to represent on, I guess, a metaphorical stance, they're supposed to represent, uh, in this case, Mary's situation and then also James's situation. The idea of them hanging right on those grates, on those steel doors, and then underneath them just having oblivion, just nothing, just an eternal abyss below. It's supposed to represent James and Maria's situation. Uh, Maria's situation, of course, with her hanging on for dear life, knowing that eventually it's going to end her life uh, in, in terms of the illness that she had, and then she would die, essentially going into the abyss. And then James's situation is... In this case, he's trying to hang on to his sanity, apparently, trying to make sure that he can, uh, I guess, make sense of everything. But the further he moves along and the further he tries to hang on to that sanity, the, the weaker that it'll get until eventually he will also lose his grip and then hang and then drop down into the abyss as well. It's a very tragic creature of some sort because this thing it cannot move anywhere else uh, uh, the way that it looks like the levels that it's in there's no way for it to escape its predicament it is always hanging by those steel grates and then uh, just by time itself eventually it cannot hang on forever so it'll eventually drop off so it can try switching I guess its arms from one to another in terms of what's being used to hang but otherwise eventually it'll tire out and then it'll drop off so kind of like a morbid creature of some sort however whoever i guess operates there in silent hill and creates the creatures they wanted to make sure they created something that was ultimately very very tragic um apparently it's also supposed to represent in a weird way um it's more along the lines of the theme of silent hill 2 which is that sexual frustration and it's the idea that uh, James is trying to get to his wife, which could be represented by these things, but he wants to be with her and I guess be intimate, but at the same time he can't, so there's that invisible grate or that invisible wall, and in this case, that grate that they hang on to, that's supposed to represent a physical representation of that barrier, because there he is, like, literally inches from someone representing her but he can never get to her because again the way that level is designed it is completely blocked from ever being able to escape its predicament and so there he is trying to get to it in some ways but he can't as well so um, otherwise uh, another interesting thing to note this mandarin um, is a popular item with one of the creators the masahiro E2, I guess. Um, he wanted to be able to make sure that it was, I guess, brought forth again, and that's why you probably see a close representation of it in Silent Hill 3. He, um, I think I was reading somewhere that he thought that it was uh, one of the most easily forgotten monsters within Silent Hill 2, no doubt, obviously, uh, with, with its very, very brief appearance, but that he thought that it was something that it should have been, I guess, more important, and so that's why he brought it back uh, within, it looks like, Silent Hill 3. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, otherwise, that's it. That's all the info, uh, really, when it comes to this very, very brief creature. If anyone else has any more information that they'd like to share, that would be great to hear. Otherwise, I'm going to cover one last monster. It should be the final battle monster, in this case, the boss known as Maria, and then I'll put my final thoughts on Silent Hill 2. So, alright everybody, thanks again as always, take care.